Congress is a place where not much happens from day to day, and generally that's because of massive gridlock or a lack of desire to actually do anything to fix the problems of the country. But sometimes their inactivity and lack of productivity is because they're simply not in D.C. for weeks or months at a time. Uh, they're about to take a new recess. The recess between now and the week after the November 4 elections will last seven weeks, which is even longer than the five-week August break, which they just got back from. They just finished their five-week break. They're now going on a seven-week break. Uh, quotes from a couple of the Democrats who are obviously going to use this for their own political gain. Uh, Nancy Pelosi saying, the American people have to ask, what do you do for a living? I would argue that could also be applied to Nancy Pelosi. Uh, but Steve Israel saying, House Republicans are now abandoning any pretense of doing actual work for the American people, skipping town one day after doing the bare minimum required to keep the government functioning, but blocking any progress for the middle class, referring there to the continuing resolution. Uh, that they voted for yesterday. So uh, they, just months of basically one week of doing anything for the American people. Now The Hill is a publication that's objective and they just report the story. I think that there's, you know, I get frustrated sometimes with the conventional wisdom that they uh, load the story up with. But here they were pointing out, this seems a little ridiculous, so you can read between the lines that they were saying that. But nonetheless, they had this one uh, uh, sentence where they said, well, Congress did have a brief yet intense September session. No, they didn't. Okay, <laughs> they literally did the bare minimum. They came in and had to vote on resolutions that if they didn't vote on, the government would literally stop and everything would stop being funded, right? Intense. Intense. <laughs> wow. Okay. It makes it sound like they pulled all nighters there. Yeah. No, yeah. they just went in, had a simple vote, and they were done. Okay. And so what's frustrating about this is that the Republicans have won. I mean, this is what I mean. President Obama got reelected, but so what? He hasn't been able to do anything. The Republican strategy was, oh great, we'll filibuster for four straight years by literally filibustering the Senate and then blocking and obstructing everything in the House and in every other kind of way with your appointments. We're just going to put just going to slam on the brakes here for go for government for four years. We're not going to let you regulate, we're not going to let you do anything. And they're 100 percent winning. Yeah. They, they've been winning for 20 years. Right. I mean, with Bill Clinton, I know you like Bill Clinton, no, but no, like the Clintons it. brought this nation to the right. I agree. I, they did. I, they, I agree. they built all the framework for this. I agree. 150 percent. I just like how he handled that. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. That's yeah. different. It's like I don't and like. I, like I don't like. I don't like George W. Bush, but at the same time, when he dodged that shoe and stayed on the podium, I'm like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> that was good. That was a nice move. Yeah. Five weeks then seven weeks. It's it's become a joke. And then what drives me crazy is that the Washington media, which of course is in bed with the uh, political figures, sometimes literally, right, uh, will turn around and every time there's a, a, a poll about how angry the American people are, they'll like pat us on the head like, oh, you're so misguided. There's this anger in the streets, but what is it really about? People don't really understand the process. No, 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 no. We do understand the process. That's why we hate them. And yeah. also, okay. and if we don't understand the process, it's because you don't properly explain the process to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're so caught up in the in the Luke Russert, both sides do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know this notion that that what's happening now is just hey normal. Sometimes this is what happens. It's not normal. Only one side really does it this much. Mm -hmm. Has in the history of time, have Democrats tried to block the legislative progress of Republicans? Yes, yes, of course they have. Right. But we That's have reached bit. a point over since 1994 where this is this is what the Republicans do. This is how they operate. Yeah, the filibuster doesn't even mean anything more. In articles right. about things being filibustered, they don't even use the word. Right. Yeah. Um, and and they're right. all corrupt. They're all corrupt because they it, look. The donors don't want them to do anything. You think the donors want them to go around pass the legislation about? Pollution, or or about climate change, or about regulating their minds that keep exploding. Right? They don't want any regulation. They don't want any laws. They want the wild, wild west. Yeah. So, yeah. and and the and the corrupt politicians that they have bought with their donor money give them exactly what they want, which is nothing. And but no action to protect in, the American in, in people. In all fairness, the Congress is designed to do nothing. It really is. It, well, it's not. It's not like a parliamentary system where the government's there and, and they can. Hey, we're going to fix this problem and we're going to do it. You know, well, X, Y, and Z way. It, well, it's, our to system these guys doesn't work that way. The first to figure it out, to how to exploit it, to an extreme. They've yeah. done a great job.
and exploiting it. One final point I want to make, at least, is let's not forget why they're doing this. Why do they want this gigantic break? It's not just that they're lazy. Many of them are still going to be working 8 to 12 hour days. They're just going to be doing it not serving the American people. They're going to be serving themselves and their own campaigns because they are going to be going to 10 different fundraisers every single day for the next seven weeks. No. They're doing this because they need money to run. Now, that's a great point by John. That they're so obsessed with raising money for their campaigns, they think that is their job. Yeah. But in the sick, grotesque system that we have now, they're right because the guy with more money wins 19 out of 20 times. Yeah. So he's gonna. His real job is to raise money. And how do you think he raises money when he gets on the phone with a donor? He says. I will do whatever you want me to do. Maybe not in those terms, but probably sometimes in those terms, right? But he makes it plainly aware to them, I, I will not serve the people that I am representing. I will serve you. And they're right. So look, man, there's one way to end these perpetual vacations. You just send a fucking wolf pack after them, okay? And so once you get money out of politics, then the voters are back in charge, and then they have to represent us. And then if you go on a 12 goddamn week vacation when the rest of us are working, we're gonna grab you by the goddamn ear. Now you know we talk about corporal punishment because Adrian Peterson, in the old days, what Turks would do, they'd grab you by the fucking ear, right? And then throw you back in the goddamn room. Now I'm not for corporal punishment when it comes to congressman, <laughs> wolf-pack.com.